Good morning, good afternoon, VMware partners. Thank you so much for joining today's Top Gun Tech Thursday session. This is the first session for Q3. We're really excited to start off this quarter. And today um, we have a great session outlined for you. And Tim Sandy, Partner Systems Engineer with VMware, he's going to be going over the VMware test drive for EUC demo environment. For those of you that haven't seen this environment and aren't familiar with it, you are in for a treat. This is a fantastic asset for our partner community um, to help you drive um, EUC and give you an environment so that you don't have to build your own. It, it's really pretty fantastic. But before I turn the ball over to Tim, I am going to go over just a few little housekeeping items. First of all, all the lines are muted, so if you have a question, and I please, please do encourage questions, please put the questions into the Q&A panel. There's two panels inside of WebEx. One is chat, that's where I was typing in, you know, that we were going to start at 8.30. Um, but there's a, there's a Q&A panel as well, and if you uh, use that, Tim will be able to see the questions and I'll actually be able to um, click on the questions and answer them as well. If you don't see the Q&A panel, there should be a little question mark, maybe bottom right corner of your screen, or you can go to, um, I think it's under, uh, let's see, view the sessions, view the panels, and you can find it there. Um, the second thing is that the session is being recorded, and we record these sessions so that you have a uh, chance to listen to the playback and get access to the presentation decks. And, but the only way that you can do that is by joining the partner link and Top Gun Tech Thursday group. This is extremely simple to do. If you're not already a member of PartnerLink, you simply go to Partner Central. The upper right-hand corner of your screen, you will see the uh, PartnerLink link. You click on that. It's going to ask you to fill out a simple profile. It's literally just your name. And, and if you want to put in a job title, you can. You don't have to. And then you click Continue. And then there's one more screen where you'll actually submit the, uh, your profile. From there, you're a member of PartnerLink. There's lots of groups out there for you to join, um, but the one uh, that you, you, we encourage you to join is the Top Gun Tech Thursday. If you uh, start typing that in, it will auto-populate. You can click on it and then click join. Um, the only I do not spam this group. I, the only things that I post there are recordings and the presentations, and once in a while, if I see a great training opportunity or something that I really need to bring to your attention, I will put it there. You can control your own uh, emails on how often you want to get those updates and obviously go to that group, uh, you know, to check it out whenever you, uh, you know, are, are curious. So I definitely encourage you to uh, please join the Top Gun Tech Thursday partner link. Well, welcome everybody and thank you for joining this week's Top Gun Tech Thursday session. Uh, like Linda said, we're going to be going over the EUC test drive demo environment. This environment is for you, the partners, to use. It is an awesome resource, as she was saying, to where you don't have to build out a bunch of end user computing products into your own uh, demo environment within your uh, corporate network or anything to that nature. This is available for you as long as you get your VTSP mobility. Correct me if I'm wrong, Linda, but I believe once they get their VTSP mobility, that opens them up to be able to get an account within the EUC test drive environment. Is that correct, Linda? That is correct. That is all you need. Okay. We used to, we used to um, have partners, they had to complete a competency. We've relaxed that requirement. So as an individual, one individual, all you need to do is complete your VTSP Mobility 2016 and you will have access to this environment. Great. Thank you for verifying that. I didn't want to lie. <laughs> so. Um, so once once you have that VTSP mobility accreditation, again, one person at your company, you can then request an account. Once you get your account and you log in, this is what you're going to see. You're going to log into this main dashboard. And just to let you know, again, this is going to be kind of a little bit of a, a quicker run through than we might normally do on, the, on our normal weekly sessions. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just a brief overview of the interface and what programs and what uh, demo capabilities you have within this environment. So I'm not going to be demoing any actual products, it's just the interface, just to kind of give you a nice overview of the interface and what's available in it. So starting off, if you look in the upper left-hand side here in this black section, this is the kind of your navigation bar. Now the navigation bar can be hidden if you want, so when you're actually demoing a product and you want a little more screen real estate, you can hide that and then you can just bring it back that simply. Now, as you see here, I've set up a picture for my profile. The little gear icon here is where you can go in and you can take a photo, you can upload one, and then based upon when you set up your account, your name, 
your title, and your email address is there. Now, if you notice a little bit further down here under your account on the navigation pane, there's also edit profile, which is the exact same thing that you get with by pressing the gear icon up here. Now, uh, if you need to change your password along the way, you can change your password, simply put in your current and then put in your new. If you run into any problems with either your account or any uh, issues within um, this environment, you can put in a support ticket. You'd put in a, uh, just a brief subject of your problem, and then in the body here, we do request that you put in as much detailed information in relation to the problem that you're having to help us help you a little bit better. And then you just submit that request. Now, if you find something that's more of a bug, again, same process, you just bring that up. You can select which particular uh, product that you're having the problem with, and then again, put a detailed description into the body and hit submit request. And then you have your logout. So that's for anything dealing with your account and reporting bugs and problems. Then we have this general area. Again, if you go click on another part of the site and you want to get back to this main dashboard, you just click the dashboard here. This is what I'm in right now. Now, again, once you get into your account and you log in for the first time, the very first thing I would do is go set up your profile, put your picture in there. The very next thing I would do is go to this My Services. Now, for your account, in order to be able to demo certain products, as you see here, such as AirWatch, Google Apps for Work, Salesforce, BlueJeans, these particular products, you need to enable them. And when they're not enabled, you see that they're grayed out like this. To enable them, you're just going to click on it and it's gonna move that little bubble over to the right and it's gonna turn green. And when you do that, it enables you to be able to use and demo that product. And once you do, typically it's gonna pop up an information window. Now, if you close that out and you go back afterwards and you wanna look at that information again, don't worry because you have this little icon here, the circle with the eye, it'll bring up the associated information. Now, I bring up this AirWatch one specifically. Now, when you log into your account and you log into any other applications, portals, or anything within this environment, you're always going to log in with your username and password that you logged in with your into the portal. The one exception to the rule in how you log in is with AirWatch Admin Console. When you go to do that, here's the link to the Admin Console. I'll show another way to get to that. But the one thing I wanted to point out here, when you log in to the AirWatch Admin Console, it's actually domain slash username. This is the only one where you have to put something other than your username. So for myself, I normally put tsandy in and my password. But for the AirWatch Admin Console, just be aware, you have to put the VMW demo slash username. So I just wanted to point that out. Once you've enabled all your associated services, I recommend that you just go and do all of them. Then that way, if you have to do a demo on the fly, it's already enabled. You don't have to wait for it to set up or anything like that. Now, you as a partner can send out invitations for login accounts. Now, you click on the send invitation. You're going to put basic information in. Now, you should have a Salesforce opportunity ID. You want to put that in there. Basic information like first, last name, title, you create a username form email address, whatever region. So this is important when you start making selections here as well as some, you'll see when we get into the Workspace ONE portal, make sure you're selecting the appropriate region. So if the individual is in the United States, then you'd want to select Americas. Now, we also serve uh, all across the world. So obviously, you're going to want to select whatever region is closest to that individual that you're sending the invitation to. You put uh, the company name whatever their segment is, potential seats for it. And my recommendation would be to do the same thing and enable all of these services for the end user, then that way they can use and play with those services yourself, or you can limit just to whatever ones. Then you just click invite new user and it sends them an email with their login information. It's that simple. Now, just as an FYI, I have this partner nomination uh, section here. That's because I'm a super user in this environment and a VMware employee, so you won't have that, so just be aware of that. So now we have the launch section. Now this is where you're gonna launch a lot of your portals that you're gonna to wanna to potentially demo to your customers. Now what I've done is I've already launched some of these already just to save time because we are uh, a little pressed for time in this presentation today. So starting off, the first one here is Workspace ONE. I can go into Workspace ONE, that brings me in and it 
I can see all the applications as well as desktops that I have access to. Now, again, if you look into the catalog here because every single app and desktop is not gonna automatically be listed in there, but you can go ahead and you can click. So for example, if I want to add this calculator to the workspace portal, so it's in the launcher, I can simply click add. And when it does that, you'll see that the calculator is now in here. Now, one thing to keep in mind, again, about the whole regional setting I was talking about, if the user's in the United States, you're gonna see that all the apps and all the desktops, as you see here, they start with their region. So this one is the Americas, the first couple of rows of these. And then you see we have APAC, and then we have EMEA. So make sure that when you're adding these, you're adding the correct either application or desktop within the region that you're in. Because you don't wanna be, uh, you know, selecting ones in EMEA and accessing from the United States because that's obviously going to cause a little bit of performance delay. So that's the workspace uh, one launch area from there. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Now the next is the Horizon native client and HTML access. Now Horizon View, you can either connect to Horizon View desktops and applications either through the native client. Now the native client is an application that you either install on your PC, your Windows-based PC, or your Mac that you install and you can launch from there. Or you can use the HTML access, which is you can use any HTML5 based web browser and access it as well. So again, for example purposes uh, for today, I'm just gonna use the HTML access, but do understand um, that with the client, if you need to download it, it's not on your PC already, you can't download it, and then you would select the appropriate geographical location again. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna do the HTML access and I'm gonna pick the Americas. And as you see, much like the Workspace ONE portal looked, it looks basically the same. You can make some settings. Again, I'm not gonna be demoing any products or how to use them or anything else like that. I'm just basically showing what applications and uh, capabilities you can demo for within here. So that's Horizon. Now next on the list is Horizon Flex. And I've already opened it up and here is the Horizon Flex admin user interface. So again, um, when you log in, you're gonna log in with your standard username and password. Next on the list, we have the AirWatch Admin Console. And uh, remember what I said about the AirWatch Admin Console, that was the one exception to the rule when you log in, it's VMW demo backslash username and then the password. So if you wanna demo any AirWatch products, you can join a, say an iPhone or an iPad or a mobile device to AirWatch and then you can go in here and show your customers the AirWatch Admin Interface. Next on the list, is the Horizon Air console. Now this is the admin console, and then we have the Horizon Air desktops, which is the user side. So here is the Horizon Air admin interface. This is where a, a virtual admin would go in and manage the Horizon Air virtual desktops. The Horizon Air, if you don't know, is we provide desktops as a service running on our vCloud Air. And then the next one, as I said, was the user interface so that when the user logs in to see what access they have to virtual desktops and apps, this is the interface that they're going to see. So we've gone through the entire navigation pane, but I wanna go back and mention one thing which is also important. I don't wanna forget this. On the main dashboard here, uh, after you've set up your profile, you've enabled all your services, I highly recommend that you go through this walkthrough and troubleshooting area, and then click on each one of these links. There's uh, some KB articles about how to use, basically an FAQ on how to use the test drive environment, any questions relating to that. Then we also have some YouTube playlist here where it goes out to VMware's YouTube playlist and it has a lot of the products that are available to demo within this environment and it'll show you and tell you about those products and also some uh, demo aspects as well. So I highly recommend that. And then if you're having any issues with connecting to Horizon View, either your apps or desktops, there's several links here which goes out to the Horizon View uh, 6.x Documentation Center, and there's some, it takes you directly to the link within the troubleshooting aspect, so troubleshooting view, network connection problems, and other troubleshooting within the Documentation Center. So that's very important, I do highly recommend that you look at that. 
Another important factor to keep in mind that this is a demo environment. This is not a production environment. And with that, the support hours in SLAs according to this environment, our support is Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, on average, it could take up to four hours to get a response. So again, when you send in a support ticket or report a bug, you should get a response in four hours or less, and typically it is considerably less, and a resolution within 48 hours. Again, typically the resolution is less than that. Keep in mind, though, if you put it in on Friday afternoon, they may not see it or get to it until Monday morning, so keep that in mind. So just a reminder, again, that it's not a full-time environment with full support. It is limited on uh, getting responses to the emails and getting your issues resolved. With that, I highly recommend that if you know, say you're doing a demo for a customer on a Wednesday, I highly recommend that you go in on Tuesday, make sure you can log into your account. You can launch all the associated applications, get access to everything that you plan on showing your customer and demoing. And that way, if you have any problems, you can send in a support request and get it resolved before you are supposed to do that demo. Now, again, within um, when we're looking at the, the Horizon client here, the HTML access, you see that we have several desktops. This is a uh, RDSH uh, presented desktop. This one here is an Ubuntu desktop. We have Windows 10. A Windows 7 desktop, and then we also have a VMware and NVIDIA Grid desktop. Now, this desktop, basically, we've taken the NVIDIA Grid K1, K2 cards, installed them into the host, and we're using those graphics accelerator uh, NVIDIA cards to basically accelerate the video processing on our virtual desktop. So we have a desktop that is specifically tied directly to the graphics acceleration card. So let's first look at the Windows 7, and again, I already have it launched. I just want to go through some of the items that are available to show. I already have some of them launched. Now, as you see here, we have uh, already a link to the VMware website. Then uh, we also have the VMware Log Insight, Hands-On Labs. So here we got the link to the Hands-On Labs I have up already. For the VRealize Log Insight, we already have this up and so you, although this is an end user computing environment we do have a couple other of our management tools that you can also demo like a log insight for log analysis and then we also have the vRealize operations management for horizon so here we have the vRealize operations and then we have the uh, for horizon pack in there as well which that way you can also monitor and manage your applications as well with your desktops then you see here we have the View Administrator Console, this is the Administrator Console that you would manage your Horizon View desktops and the whole Horizon View environment. Then we also have the end user, uh, excuse me, the User Environment Manager tool, which is this here, and here's the link for it. And again, this is uh, for doing user management, so like redirection of favorites and profile items and data for your view desktops. And then you'll see we also have some programs such as Google Earth. Now, Google Earth, um, on this one, you know, you can, with Google Earth, you can double click in to go and show it. Now, this is just a regular view desktop. This has no graphics acceleration or anything. As you can see, it still performs very well. Now, you'll also see that we, all, we have many of the Office products, such as PowerPoint. We have Word. We have Excel. We also have a design program, this 123 design, and there in this 123 design folder, there's some pre-configured uh, design uh, pr uh, examples that you can go in and show customers and demo. Also, we have this turbine. It's a, basically a, uh, um, a design uh, program as well for uh, showing a, an engine turbine. So these are a lot of what's available on here, but one of the best demos that I recommend is if you need to demo the, uh, the app volumes product, you'll, if you go to the start button here, go to all apps, you can uh, go down. I've already, uh, just to show you right here, here's the shortcuts. So if you want to demo how app volumes work and how great it works, app volumes, I can go ahead and click on the add app volumes that applications in less than a minute it's going to show you that we're going to about triple the amount of applications that are on this desktop 
So it's a very powerful demo, very simple, and they've got the shortcuts there to run the script and to do that for you very quickly and effectively. So that volume attaches the volume, and as you see now, we just added about 30, 35 new applications to this desktop. And then in the reverse, I got the shortcut here to go ahead and remove and disconnect the app volumes to, again, take away all these new applications, as you see, in about 10 seconds, it removed that. So that's a great demo to do. So this is our standard uh, plain Jane Horizon View Windows 7 desktop. But again, uh, just to show, I mentioned about we have these uh, this NVIDIA grid accelerated desktop that's specifically tied to this graphics acceleration program, or uh, card rather. So again, there are many shortcuts here to different things that you can demo to show what kind of graphics capability that you now have in comparison to the standard desktop. So for example, real quick here, uh, for example, we have a Katy Perry uh, video. I didn't pick it, that's what was in there. But basically you can show how the video streams just like it's supposed to. So that's a nice example of video graphics there. Then we also have this demo here where it's demoing water. And if you click on the ball and move it around, you can see that the water ripples. And the effect of the ripples is very much realistic. So you can really see how that graphics acceleration makes a big difference. And water is something that's very hard to look realistic. So the, uh, those examples here is YouTube for K uh, Katy Perry, and then that was the HTML5 water. Also, I want to show you this digital IRA. It is basically a view of a CGI type of view of a man's face. But look at the quality of the skin tone, the reflection. If you click on his face, he does different facial features, and you can also turn and keep doing the same. Look how realistic that is. So this just shows the power of that NVIDIA graphics behind using that graphic acceleration card. So this gives you an example of what the capabilities are. Also, if, say, if somebody, a graphics firm wants to do any AutoCAD types of drawings or anything of that nature. So again, you also have Google Earth. So there's plenty of examples of things that you can demo on here. So, Essentially, that is all of the, the overview of the demo environment, everything that's in it, its capabilities, how to use it. Again, we weren't going to go over any of the products themselves, but I wanted to show you what the capabilities were. So uh, with that, Linda, uh, were any questions come in for the question and answer while I was talking? Uh, we, we, the only question that came in, I, I actually did answer. Um, Tim, you know, we have a, maybe a few more minutes. Is there something, um, you know, maybe that you could show just quickly that you're familiar with? Um, let's see here. Product perspective you think is cool? Maybe, maybe something, AirWatch or? Um, not so much AirWatch. I'm, I'm not the greatest with the AirWatch admin interface. I mean, you can, um, Again, you can go in and click around. There, there's so much that you can look at within the AirWatch interface. When you go into the main dashboard here, now again, this is, uh, this is essentially sample data uh, just for the demo environment. This isn't a live production environment for any of the systems in here. So keep that in mind, whether you're looking at ViewRealize operations, the AirWatch admin portal, uh, the Horizon View environment, uh, whatever you're looking at, again, this is a demo environment, so it's not like a, a live VMware production environment. So keep in mind that everything you're going to look at as far as the percentages and numbers are for this demo environment. So just keep that in mind. But with the AirWatch environment, I mean, there, there's a ton that you can show within there from anything from going into, again, the devices to accounts, setting up accounts, which particular um, applications they have access to to uh, also content such as, you know, with AirWatch, you can limit video. You can also force, uh, not force, but you can say, okay, everybody needs to watch this compliance video, and it will track whether or not somebody has watched the compliance video or not, and it will track that for them. Um, also uh, within AirWatch, you also have secure email, so you can also can control the email within AirWatch. So, uh, I highly recommend that 
you know, obviously there's a, there's a lot of products in here and nobody's gonna be able to just go into this environment, start demoing everything in here. Obviously, you're gonna wanna pick uh, what you're good at. First of all, you wanna get a comfortable feeling of what products that you can demo. And I, you know, I kinda went through a lot of them, but I didn't show you everything. Once you understand what's in there, what you're capable of demoing, then after that, pick a couple and start using them, get familiar with them, how to use them, how to demo them, so that when you do get the opportunity to do a demo for a customer, you're not doing it for the first time and you kind of know your way around. I highly recommend that. Um, okay. so, so let me, there's a couple of questions that came in and one thing I want to make sure. make sure that everybody's clear on. So uh, somebody asked if there's any demos for vCenter. This is really an EUC environment. It's not, it's not every product that, um, VMware offers, it's, it's test drive for EUC, so um, we don't really have, uh, uh, Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, we don't really have a vCenter demo. Um, and then, uh, is that correct, Tim? That is correct. You won't have access to a vCenter to demo that. Okay, and then um, the other question was, are there any pitfalls that we should, that they should stay away from when doing a customer demo? So anything that maybe you know, um, you know, might Yeah, some recommendations that I have. Um, first of all, keep in mind, now this environment runs phenomenal and they, they do a great job of keeping, the, keeping this up and running at all times. And once you have an account and they are gonna do, the, the one good thing they also do about this is they keep the versions of the applications such as app volumes or say, be realized operations manager they keep them regularly updated with the new versions. So they do have maintenance windows. So you will receive emails regarding any of the maintenance windows coming up and then once they're completed with the maintenance, you'll get a follow-up email as well. So obviously you wanna be uh, cognizant of those coming up and when you're scheduling any type of demos. Now typically, I think they normally do them more on the weekends and after hours, not during you know, normal working hours. But, you know, there is a chance, so just be aware of that and keep an eye on that. Also, keep in mind that where you're accessing the, your, this demo environment from, whether it be from home or from the work or whatever, if you have a very poor internet connection, then keep in mind that no matter how wonderful this demo environment runs, you have to keep in mind that your internet connection is a variable there, and if you have a very poor connection or unreliable, then this is not gonna run that great. So keep that in mind as well, where I, I highly recommend that you run it on a, on a up-to-date PC that's, you know, that runs really well. Also make sure that you, again, have a, a good internet connection. Uh, I also recommend that just don't, for example, say you have somebody that's interested in app volumes. I wouldn't just, you know, demo, what the customer wants in relation to, you know, what they're actually looking for. I wouldn't necessarily just start going in and demoing a bunch of products and don't go to the NVIDIA grid desktop and start doing all these 3D graphics, especially if you have a poor connection because the response might not be bad. Um, so keep that in mind. And as I said uh, earlier, make sure that you're going out the day before you plan on doing a demo, make sure you can access your account, that you can launch the applications, kind of preemptively make sure you have no problems, that we can get a ticket in. And then also, the day of the demo, I would make sure like an hour before, just like I did before presenting to you right now, I was in here an hour ago making sure that I could launch everything, get access to everything, and everything worked fine. And then, uh, if you noticed, I had also pre-launched a lot of the tabs. Now, that was specifically because we kind of have a, a shorter window for this particular session this week because we do have a VMware corporate employee meeting that we have to get to. So it's, uh, our session is normally 45 minutes for the Top Gun Tech Thursdays, but this one has to be a little bit shorter. So I opened them up. And so again, you can do that as well when you're gonna do a demo, maybe open them up ahead of time. That way, when you click on something, if it takes maybe a minute or two to launch that particular application, it, you're not sitting there waiting for it to launch. It just doesn't look as good. So do those kind of precursor work and checks and everything else ahead of time, and you shouldn't have any problems because this environment runs wonderfully. I've never seen or had problems with it myself.
Okay. Those and would then, be my uh, recommendations. Okay, and then last thing, and then we're, we are going to close it just a few minutes early today. So, sorry about that. Um, but no Tim, can you just bring up, um, you, you talked about how to invite someone to the portal. Can you bring that back yeah. up quickly? So um, we just want to reiterate, and I put it in the chat, but I just want to reiterate, when we say that you can invite someone to the portal, what we mean by that is, is two things. First, and probably the most important is you can invite your customers to this portal. So that's what's really cool about this. Not only is it a demo portal for you to get your customers excited um, about, you know, the, the EUC portfolio of products that we have and how they work together, but you can actually, you know, if you're working with a customer and you, you get them excited, give them a try. This is where, like, give them a trial, right? Get them into the demo portal and let them play with the products, you know, maybe you can, you know, handhold them, and it's, you know, it's a great way for you to interact with your customers, but give them access to the portal and let them see the power of these products together. Um, you know, it, it's a great selling opportunity, right? So when we say invite someone, we're primarily saying invite your customers. There is a limit. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but um, there is a limit of I how many it's five for the partners, if I remember correctly, but I could be wrong. Okay, and then the other thing, and they do have an expiration date, so they're good. Do you know how long they're good for, Tim, like 30 or 60 days? Um, I believe it's 30 days by default. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it's 30. And then lastly, you can also, let's say that you have a colleague, um, and you, you, can, you can invite colleagues to, you know, to the portal. So, you know, you can use it how you want, but you can invite others, so probably customers, um, you know, uh, you know, customers, you really want to get them in here to get the end user experience so they can sort of see what this looks like. And I just got a note that it looks like you can ask for an extension on the, um, the sort of the trial if you open up a support ticket. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us, and I look forward to seeing everyone on our next um, Top Gun session. And thanks to Tim Sandy for presenting. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks, Linda.